safety when you're going foraging for mushrooms, there's really only one rule, uh, and, and that is if in doubt, don't, don't ever eat anything. You don't know what it is, or you're not sure what it is. Uh, even if you just got like 0.1% of doubt about it, don't bother. There's plenty of easily identifiable mushrooms you can eat. I found some lovely little puffballs. This is a little pear-shaped puffball. Um, these don't look like mushrooms um, because they don't have gills underneath. What happens is as they get older, they get darker in colour. This one's a little bit darker. And as the outside begins to disintegrate, the inside, which is full of spores, any drop of rain or animal or anything that squeezes it, and out comes a puff of spores. At that stage, they're no use to eat. But at this stage, the smaller the better, in fact, um, they're absolutely wonderful, just sliced up and fried in butter. So these, uh, these are going to be my mushroom store for the next few days. When I'm picking something that uh, is edible for myself, I never take everything that's there. Always leave some to, to reproduce and for other people to see. Um, I tend to take a few small ones, but leave a lot of little ones coming and leave all the old ones because there's no point picking them anyway. They're not going to be edible. And also be very careful um, not to damage the habitat that they're growing in because lots of other creatures are relying on that habitat as well, not just me for my mushrooms. We found some chanterelles. We've got some and they're very nice and they're very delectable to eat as well. They're slightly different from other groups of mushrooms. They do have what look like gills, but actually they're like thick wrinkles in the underneath of the cap. And they always come down the stem. And on the chanterelle, they'll all be different lengths. The cap will be uneven. And you've always got this bright orange um, color to it, a yellow or orange, I should say, depending how wet it's been. The smell um, is said to be of apricots. Sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. Depends how much rain you've had and where you are, the soil and so on. They're normally associated with birch trees. So although they're not under birch trees here, there are birch trees all around. Uh, there are mushrooms that could be mistaken for chanterelles if you really, really, really weren't looking carefully. And some of those are deadly. So. The answer is to look carefully and you can't really mistake it for anything else. And I'm going to really, really enjoy these few to go with my puff force. Well, this is a brown birch bolete, uh, one of the boletus family in which you'll also find the sep and other edible species. It's not as tasty as the sep, but it has a great advantage that is that it never or hardly ever gets full of maggots. So when you pick it, you've got to eat it. You have to get there before the slugs, which really enjoy it. Uh, there's one just crawling up the stem to make use of it. Underneath, it's like a sponge. It doesn't have gills like the normal mushroom. Um, and when the mushroom is young, it's uh, those spongy pores are white in colour. So that's a pretty perfect one. Um, they're very good at drying as well, but I'm not going to take the slug because you can't eat slugs. They don't taste good. This one is uh, a little bit too old for us to eat. It's an ink cup. Um, it would have been a shaggy ink cup when it was um, fresh and new. They're also called lawyer's wigs because that's exactly what they look like. But as they develop, the gills auto digest and produce this black ink which contains the spores. You have to get them before the gills start to turn black while they're still white or cream colored and they're, they're just like sort of a long oval um, in that stage. And they're absolutely delicious fried in butter and served on toast for breakfast. Mm -hmm.